Good evening, everyone. This is Gutierrez Programming, and today we're going to learn about classes and derived classes in C++. Uh, this is not to be taken as a comp uh, comprehensive lecture on classes and objects and op object-oriented programming. For that, I refer you to um, Professor Dekdi Avera's lecture on classes. Um, she's going to go into a lot more of the intricacies, so, some more examples. This is going to be more so directed so that um, there is an understanding or a fundamental understanding of classes and also all of the syntax needed to complete the Cengage or to complete the Cengage assignments uh, for classes in C++, um, both assignments which include uh, regular classes and derived classes. Now, uh, for us to begin, we're going to discuss what is a class. A class is an idea or thing which is described by data members, which, can, which are the components, and its member functions, which can be thought of as the actions. Now, this doesn't really make too much sense until we actually start talking about specific classes. Um, and this is very, very exciting because we're gonna be able to create our own data type. For example, in the past, if I wanted to create a variable such as int x, I could do that. I could declare an integer x, and we know that x is a variable which holds whole numbers. But what if I wanted to create my own object? Is that possible? Yes, through classes. Um, so say, for example, if I wanted to create my own type of uh, data type called a player, or maybe a video game player, these are all different things that we could create. Um, so it it's, uh, has its own data members in the sense that a player probably has an attack level, a defense level, a name, and so forth. And a video game player is probably a little bit different. It's very similar to a player, but it has maybe an extra attribute, maybe, a, maybe has a strength level, right? And we'll get into that implementation in just a bit. <clears throat> One thing that I do want to say is, from these ideas or these classes, we're able to create specific objects, or specific, in this case, characters. And so, for example, if I wanted to create a player called Bob, I could absolutely do that. The data type is player and the specific object is Bob. And I can give him certain properties. I could tell, I could give him a specific name, attack level, defense level. I could also create a different type of object called a video game player. And this is coming from a different class. His, uh, the, the name of the object in this case is Leo and I can assign other attributes and also behaviors. Right? And so these are some things that we can do with classes. They are independent from each other. What does that mean? That means that if we have two video game players, if I were to level up, then that doesn't affect you. It doesn't make you level up. And if you were to level up, that doesn't necessarily make me level up because we're separate or independent entities or objects. Um, the last thing that I want to discuss is that we can have a relationship between uh, classes and that's where we get to derive classes. And we'll see that when there is a relationship between two, so for example, we probably notice that a video game is a specific type of player. A video game player is a specific type of player. A player is a general type of class, and a video game player is a more specific type, right? So it, he might have a little bit of extra uh, nuances or subtleties to him. So uh, that being said, because there is most of the data that is the same, you can also imagine a lot of the functions or member functions are going to be the same, maybe a slight tweak here and there, and that's going to be known as over, override or overriding a function. And you can think of that as kind of like uh, if you were to play a game, and you were to cast an ultimate or special, you'll notice that each character has a different ultimate or special. And that's because of something called uh, overriding member functions. And so in order for this to work properly, we have to declare and define a class. You'll notice that I have separate header files. In these separate files, it's gonna, how you, it's gonna be exactly how you see it in Cengage. This is where we write the class. This is where we declare our class and also where we define our class. Here is where we declare our video game player class, and here's where we define our play video game player class as well. And uh, Cengage is gonna have it set up like this. Typically, you would do it in a header file, your declarations, and you would do your implementations or all of these definitions, I would put them in a CPP file. So something like player.cpp. Now, Cengage doesn't require this, so I'm only gonna teach it in this way, and that's why I refer you to Professor Dekti uh videos, just so you could see that um, separation between the two. Now, that being said, how do we get these two files into main.cpp? So later on, I'll be able to create players and video game players. Well, that's actually going to be this hashtag include, this preprocessor directive. Now, if you remember from our previous lectures, hashtag include, all it is, is a copy and paste. So this is actually just copying and pasting the file player.h, player.h being this entire file where I tell you what a player, um, a player class is, right? Where I say this thing exists, and this is the instructions to make one up. And so 
essentially it's the equivalent of me copying and pasting all of this and replacing it with line number three. The same goes for line number four of video game player is all of this code. Now, one thing I will say as a reminder is that um, I do want to focus more on the details. And, uh, and so you'll notice that there are a lot of additional comments um, included on the side just to be able to explain a little bit more of what's going on. Unfortunately, I am not writing this as I go just because there are so many details and I want to be able to spend more time uh, just describing the events or describing the code rather than kind of coding it out myself. Um, we will see that for the, the next videos, Java and Python. And then please be sure to watch the C++, then the Java, then the Python videos. So let's start off with our first class. How do we create our first class? Let's create a player. Let's start from the top and bottom. You'll notice that Cengage will have this hashtag private one once, or actually it'll have a hashtag if, if and def, um, hashtag define. And then at the end, it's gonna have a hashtag and if or pound sign and if, that's gonna be what's called a header guard. And that prevents it from copying and pasting multiple times. And so for example, if I were to include this line multiple times, that's just, that's just really to prevent uh, multiple inclusions, which means that uh, it's not gonna crash our code, right? Because uh, you wouldn't wanna copy and paste something several, several times. Now, that being said, uh, within a header file, I am gonna use the namespace STD. This is not a good habit to have. We're gonna do it for um, simplicity, just because in this file, I'm also going to use the implementation. So you're going to see me writing a lot of things that would normally have the std colon colon um, before using those pre-built functions. And so for the sake of convenience, I am just putting this in a header file, but this is a bad habit to have. Let's move on to declaring a class. How do you declare a class? You use the keyword class followed by the name of the class. Typically the convention is to use an uppercase. So this is going to be capital P player. At the end, what I also want you to do is I want you to make sure to put a semicolon at the end of your curly braces. Inside of the curly braces, this is your entire uh, declaration. And then at the end, you always need a semicolon. Now, this is going to be a little different from functions because at functions, you don't write that semicolon at the end. Here you do, or else it's going to um, uh, run as an error. And I know sometimes that can be uh, a bit confusing and that can lead to a lot of troubleshooting. Um, the next thing to... Uh, think about is what describes a player? Would everyone agree that a name is probably, uh, every player has a name associated with them? They would probably have some kind of attack level and some kind of defense level. And notice that I just pair it with the um, respective data type. So for example, the name is a string, the attack is an integer, and the defense is an integer. These are data members. These are what make up or describe the, the player class. Now, one thing to note is that we have what's called an, an access specifier. This is called private and colon. Everything by default in here is private, but we're just trying to be explicit. It's good practice to say private colon. And so everything from here all the way to public is going to be private. So up till here. And what that means is that these can only be accessed within the class. So anything within the class can directly call name, attack, defense. Um, but if you're outside of the class, like in the main function, you cannot directly call these you actually have to go through an indirect method or an indirect um, avenue. That leads us to our next section. The next section is gonna be public access specifiers. And in the public access specifiers, these can be accessed anywhere, inside and outside of the class, such as main. And these are gonna be how we actually access our data members, name, attack, and defense. So we're actually, what's gonna, we're actually gonna define what are known as, I declare and define what's known as our um, setters and getters. What are setters and getters? These are ways so that when we create a player object, we can set its name, we can give it a name, we can set attack, give it an attack level, set its defense, give it a defense level. But what if we want to read these numbers? What if we want to access these names? If I want to know what the name of my player is, then I need the getter function. And that's exactly what we're going to do. So you're going to see our getters and setters. Let's start off with our name. Uh, we're going to follow our camel case. Uh, for the the setter function, all it's going to do is it's going to take in a string argument, right? So it's going to take in some kind of string and it's going to set it equal to our name data member or assign it to our name data member. And this is going to be a void function because it's not really turning anything um, versus our getter function is going to actually return a string. It's actually going to return the name data member itself. 
Okay, so it does not take any input. All it's going to do is it's going to return this so we can know what it is. Um, the same thing is going to happen for our, our uh, attack data member and our defense data member. So typically for each data member, there's always a setter and a getter. Um, there are some more rules that we can apply to the setters, but for now, it's just going to be directly attaching them um, or directly assigning them. We don't have to worry about any kind of validation. Um, typically, we also would have constructors. In this case, we're not going to work with constructors only because it's not mentioned in the C++ section. It is going to be included for, I believe, the Python section and perhaps even the Java. I'll have to double check that. The last member function, and so these are things that the that the player class can do. Um, it can set a name, get a name. It can do all of these setters and getters, but also it can print. And so we're gonna look at how to actually define all of these, because if you'll notice, they look kind of like prototypes. They're just declarations of the member functions. So how do we actually define these outside of the class? So here it's within the class. You can define them inside, which is called an inline um, definition, or you can choose to define them outside, which we've done so here. Now the syntax is almost exactly the same as a regular function, but you're gonna have to specify, actually, let's just take a look at the syntax. So we're gonna have our normal data type. Then what's gonna be interesting is you're gonna have what's the class name written followed by colon colon. This is called the resolution scope operator. And this essentially says that this function right here, this function belongs to this class. Okay, so that's, that's the only difference. And it's essentially the same as me writing it inside of here. There are some slight differences in line versus not in line, but um, just know that you have to write the class name colon colon if you're not defining it inside of your class, which we won't be in these cases. So, so please make sure uh, to make a note of that. So the return type, the name of the class colon colon, the name of the function, any parameters and our function definition. So really the only thing that's new is gonna be the class name colon colon. So let's start off with our first setter, and that's going to be set name. So what is the return type of the set name? It's void, right? So if we go back to it, uh, let's take a look. It's going to be void. What's the name of the class? It's going to be a player, colon, colon. The name of the function is set name, followed by uh, taking in a string argument called name. There is one thing, whenever you take in a string argument, or whenever you take in an argument and you want to assign it to your data member, the name has to be a little bit different because this is an ar a parameter or an argument and this actually refers to the data member name. And so if you were to use the same name for each of them, it's a little confusing because this is called name, then you wouldn't know which one are you referring to. Are you referring to the argument or are you referring to the data member? If you provide a different name, then, then there's not going to be any kind of issue. It's not going to be ambiguous. So essentially the argument is going to be assigned to the data member. Versus if I'm, if I'm writing a getter function, all it's going to do is it's going to return that uh, member function. In this case, it's going to return the name data member. Or yes, all, the, the, all that's going to do. The same thing for the, uh, the other setters and getters. Uh, we're providing another argument. We're providing another argument and assigning it to the data members, as you'll see here and as you'll see here. Uh, and for the getters, those tend to be the, most sim uh, the simplest just because all they do is they return um, the value of the of the data member. Now, what if we want to do the print function? For the print function, the return type is void. The name of it is print. Uh, we ha always have to remember our, our name of a class, colon, colon. So please don't forget that. Um, and inside of here, what do I want to say? I want to say, I'm a player object. My name is followed by name. My attack level is this attack and my defense is this. And my combined levels is attack plus defense. So essentially, if my attack is 10 and my defense is 10, then this should be 20. Right, so um, everything's pretty straightforward at the moment. Also notice I'm directly calling all of the data members, name, attack, defense, why? Because when I say player colon colon, I know that I'm part of the player class, so I can directly call these. There's no issue. If I wasn't part of the player class, then that would be an issue because they're, pub they're private data members. So then I would actually have to call a function to use them. So that essentially covers how to, um, how to declare and define the player class. What if we were to do a specialization? What if we were to do a child or a derived class of the player? So what that means is I want to create a video game player class. It's almost exactly like a player class because a, a video game player in my mind has a name, has an attack level, has a defense level. The only thing in my mind a video game player might have extra is an extra data member, like a strength level, 
And because it has that extra data member, if you'll notice right here, then we also are going to need extra getters and setters, an additional set of getters and setters for that data member. So this is going to be a repeat of before. There is one thing I want to say about uh, declaring a child class. And so let's start from the top. In order to start from the top, we have to say class video game player. But a little different than before is if I want to inherit all of those data members and functions, if I want a copy of all of these, rather than having to rewrite all of the code and have uh, code duplication, which is you know, not a great thing to have, I can instead do what's called an inheritance of the player class by writing a colon public player. And what this means is that a video game player has everything a player has, which means it, it inherited or it, it received also a private data member uh, of, uh, of a attack level. It also has a data member of a, well, it doesn't actually have a private data member, but it, it has a data member of an attack level. It has also a data member of a defense level. And it also has the getters and setters and the print function. So that's one thing to consider. Now notice here, we're just writing that extra data member, the extra getters and setters. And last but not least, we're having another print function. This is gonna get a little bit interesting because in this case, we're gonna overwrite it. So what that means is we're gonna have the same function name. This is different from function overloading where it actually has different parameters. This has the same parameters an empty list. But um, in this case, what's actually gonna happen is if we have a player object and it calls the print function, we wanted to have a different output than a video game player calling the print function. And so before we actually get to that, let's finish up the getters and setters. As a reminder, for a setter, we would just provide in an argument, and then that argument is assigned to our data member. And then for our getter, we just return the data member, which is the additional data member of strength. The last thing is, uh, is going to be overriding a function. Now, in order to do this, notice that's a little different. In our previous print function, I stated that I am a player object and my name is so-and-so and my total levels is attack plus defense. What, what about this function? In this case, I say I am a video game player object. So I'm a different kind of object. And my name is, notice I can't directly call name because name was declared private in the player class. And because this video game player is not part of the player class, it has those same data members, but it's not part of it. I can't directly access the name um, data member. Instead, I have to use a public function such as the getter. So you'll notice in this case, I'll say uh, my name is get name function. In this case, I can access it because this is public and this, is, uh, this can be reached um, indirectly from anywhere else, um, outside of the class, inside of the class, so inside of another class or inside of the main function. So here we get name, get attack, get defense. What's the only data member that directly belongs to this video game player? It's the strength data member. So that I can call directly. And then my combined levels, the reason why I wanted this print to be a little different is because I actually have an extra level. So I wanna consider that when I say my total, it's my attack plus my strength plus my defense. And that essentially concludes um, all of the declarations and definitions of the player class and the video game player. Let's see this in action. Now it's, uh, in Cengage does not use the constructors. So what we actually have to do is if I want to create a player object, I'll say player, which is the name of the class or the data type that we created. Very exciting. I'll give it a, it, this is the name of the object. You, you might think of it as a variable name, but it's the name of an object because it is a, it is a class instantiation, but um, it's very similar in that sense. Um, from there, we can directly call its data members. How do I do that? I write Bob dot, and I'm going to set all of its data members. I'm going to set its name to Bob. I'm going to set its attack to 10, set its defense to 10. And then I'm going to print out Bob's attack level is Bob dot get attack. This, of course, returning Bob's attack level. And remember, because it's public, I can access it in the main function. What would not be allowed is if I were to do something like attack. This is not acceptable because it's private. So let's go ahead and just revert that. Also, I create a video game player called Leo. I set all of his data members. This is how Cengage wants you to do it, not using constructors. So it's a bit tedious in this sense. I'm gonna print out his attack level to show you that they're different from one another. They don't affect each other. And the last thing is I'm gonna call Bob's print function and Leo's print function. Remember, Bob is a player object and Leo is a video game player object. So even though it's the same, even though it's, uh, even though this video game player object, Leo, inherited the player 
um, function prints, it's actually going to be different because I overrided it or I gave it a new definition. Essentially, I, I made it do something a little bit different. Um, and that's what's going to lead to the different results. Let's run this code and let's look at the results. So the first thing that's going to happen is Bob's attack level is 10, which makes sense. I set his attack to 10. Leo's attack level is 20 because I set it to 20. There we go. And then for the print functions, for Bob, it says, I am a player object. My name is Bob. My attack level is 10. My defense is 10. My combined levels is 20. Versus for Leo, it says, I am a video game player object. My name is Leo. My attack level is 20. My defense is 20. My strength level is 20. And my combined levels is a total of 60. And so this shows the power of object-oriented programming, inheritance, and how we can prevent a lot of code duplication and make a lot more complex um, classes or constructs uh, from inheritance. And also through polymorphism, this idea of, um, of differentiation, of being able to kind of give it almost the same feeling, but just a little bit of a, of a nuance of a different kick. Um, that's the idea of polymorphism. And so that's how you see the print function essentially doing different things, depending on what kind of object it is. Now, I hope um, all of this uh, was a bit clear. I know that I went a little bit over my time, but thank you so much for listening. Uh, please uh, make sure to ask any questions. Uh, if you need any help, we're always available for office hours. Myself, Professor Dekdiavera, and Connor. Um, thank you so much, and I hope you have a wonderful day.